The hand is one of the most beautifully complex pieces of natural engineering in the human body. The design of our hands with four fingers and an opposing thumb give us a great ability to accomplish complex and delicate physical tasks. Amazing. Mind blown. It also gives us a very powerful grip. The skin at our fingertips is very specialized, allowing us sensitivity to hot and cold temperatures, as well as the subtlest of touches. Just like the face, hands are often powerful communicators expressing ideas through sign language. In portraiture, heads and hands go together and are taught as such in art universities and ateliers. In drawing hands, just like anything else, you'll want to understand the gesture and the structure of it. So this is going to be a 100 hands drawing challenge. That's 10 hands in 10 days. So let's jump in and explore and see what it's all about. All right, so I'm going to run through a few options here, drawing a few hands to show you how I approach hands, how I think about drawing hands and what's helpful to me. And one idea that's kind of novel is to think of not the hand anatomically or as really a thing that you know and understand, but think of each digit as a character in a cast, in a story. And that'll do a couple things. It'll give your hands character, right? It'll bring them to life. And then you can kind of think of them all together in an ensemble, in a cast of characters telling a story. So you got the big, the big fat thumb, right? That's a character. You got the little pinky and that's another one and how they relate together and the ring finger, pointer finger, and so on. Um, you can think of them as a family, right? So how do they relate to each other? I find that that that's fun. It brings kind of life and gesture to my otherwise anatomical study of a hand or, you know, just a kind of a rigid depiction of a hand. And so that, that'd be kind of like one interesting way to approach hands. Another way that I think is, is helpful is to think of the hand as almost like a box. So the hand and the wrist are very boxy. If you look at your wrist leading into the hand, it's flat on top and flat on the side. And so there's an opportunity there to use a boxy structure. And even the fingers are flat on the top. And when you turn your hand over to the sup supinate position, palm up, it's they're flat too. They're a little more fleshy, but they're flat. And the side can be also somewhat planar. So you can use little boxes, right? Little box segments of three for each finger. Try that because that often works. It's counterintuitive, but it, it does work. Instead of thinking of something with flesh and bone and tendon and anatomical terms, just think of it in terms of simple boxes, right? Or simple tubes, whatever simple primitive you can use, go ahead and use it as a concept. Very helpful, very effective, and it's a time saver. All right, so we almost got this one hand and kind of make it a little bit smaller to fit it on the page. The rest of these kind of compose this thing. So I'm, I've been drawing, I'm on day five of this. So I've been drawing for a little while. I think I did like 15 hands a day and then I slowed down to about 10. Feel free to go at your own pace. There is no, um, you know, strict, fixed rules here. It's just really for you to get into it where you may have been hesitant just to jump in and get some experience drawing hands because let's face it in portraits we may have to draw hands. If you're doing illustrations, character design for game or film, animation especially if you have to draw hands oh that's going to be a struggle so you might as well get in and practice and getting that pencil mileage in is, is really a big part of it, a part of getting better. And then also 
studying specific things like structure or gesture or anatomy and breaking it down that'll help level up in increments in manageable increments to help you get better at drawing hands because hands are pretty complex I, th I kind of think of them as more complex than drawing a human face or even the body for that matter they're just such intricate parts fit together and they're I don't know if there's an infinite way that they can constellate, but the hands can, gosh, they're so expressive, as I mentioned before. So they can do and uh, form all, almost any kind of pose or position and then get pretty complex. And then if you put the two hands together, it gets very complex. So we'll just do concentrate on one hand for now. And so I'm really just taking the digits breaking them down into three and they've got three you know two joints three parts and i'm drawing around like the little tubes like contour uh, co cross contour around to show kind of the volume and the position in space but also notice on the top part of the thumb there's more bone there just bone and tendon there's not a lot of muscle and fat so that tends to be flat and more scalloped Okay, so I mean it's concave when I say scalloped. When you turn your hand over to the palm upside, it's more convex, it's it's more fleshy. So they're more like these little C curves, little pillows. I find that's a helpful idea. Oftentimes I'll take a finger and the top part of the of the finger when the palm is facing down. I'll just give it two distinct regions and one one knuckle because there's sort of a bigger knuckle and then a smaller knuckle near the tip I'll just more or less um, accent that knuckle in the middle and on the other side with the palm facing down uh, the other side of the finger I'll give that three distinct kind of pillowy expressions. I don't know if that makes sense. So one side of the finger will have just two parts and the underside will have three parts. And that cuts down a little bit, especially when the finger is straight. That's enough for me, I find, to express. It's enough information to uh, get a finger across. So instead of having three parts on the top and three parts on the bottom, I'll have two parts on the top, three on the bottom. So again, the cross contours. Really helpful. Blocking it out with big forms. That's also really helpful. Try and find out what way works for you the best. Experiment. Jump in draw draw and draw every day so a lot of foreshortening and so if you can draw things kind of stacked up tubes stacked up on each other squares circles learn how to stack things and draw through That's pretty helpful. I won't put too much shading on it since I'm holding my own hand here. All right. So as you start out, your hands are going to look pretty bad. So don't judge it, right? This is about getting pencil mileage, getting your, getting exposed to this, getting some exposure to it. 
And so your first 10, 20, 30 hands are going to perhaps look, look bad. So don't judge it. Just observe and notice what you see, how things connect, overlaps of skin, where fingers line up, the comparison of the size of one finger to another and into the whole. Just get going, they don't have to be perfect. Notice how the wrist is very boxy. You can use that opportunity to connect things using a box, and that works pretty good. So the hand is kind of boxy. Let me see here. Justice. And then that thumb there's a lot of overlap. There's a lot of fleshy stuff in the thumb right there. And let's see how these these knuckles, they're very almost diamond-like. Let's get the front of this, get the proper overlap here. It tapers and narrows towards the end. Okay. And you'll get faster, you'll get better as you go. <clears throat> Can't see here. So I got the thumb, forefinger, middle finger, ring finger, and then the pinky is oftentimes curving the other way so you have these gestures you have these little actors all playing their part to form to form the whole the palm here all right <clears throat> see here this the palmaris muscle is probably the biggest muscle on the hand and the hand is really a bunch of bones that are controlled by the forearm so it's just like a bony puppet and the muscles actually controlling the hand are up in the forearm that's pretty interesting Got a cylinder into some kind of connecting to the palm, connecting to the to the hand. And we've got this overlap of skin. One, two, three. Same thing here, one, two, three.
and where things connect, how the fingers connect to the palm is really interesting. There's space there. It's almost like, like a web, like, like duck's feet. It's very interesting when you really take a look at it. They don't just abruptly connect, you know. And then we got this beautiful pinky in here going the opposite way. Makes such a beautiful, you know, imagine someone playing a piano and all the different positions that the fingers need to be in or a violin. And it just looks so beautiful. Not only does the sound coming from the instrument sound beautiful, the way it looks as people do it is also, I find that just all part of it, all part of the the beauty of the human figure, the beauty of music, you know, it all comes together. All right, so we got that. So they're getting, you know, they're getting a little bit better. Just have fun with it. Okay, let's see, what else? What else can I hold the position? Uh, <clears throat> can I hold that position? Let's see. Now, one way you can do this is you can do the fingers like a emit. So the fingers can be, let me just try like this. Let me do this here. You can break it down. You can simplify this as like a mitt. Okay. So imagine Mickey Mouse, his hand has like a big mitt and then a thumb, right? So imagine ski gloves are like a mitten and these four fingers are grouped together and the thumb is separate. So you can start like, like you pulled a, a sock over your hand and these guys are just all together this is really helpful and then you've got your thumb that simplifies a lot So you have to worry about is that two things the thumb and this group here and then you can come through and figure out the positioning and the proportion of these other fingers so you got kind of where they start right there and they're all kind of going in this direction one, two, three, and then we have the pinky coming in, leaning in like a little character, like a little little brother. Imagine these are all brothers and sisters and they're part of a family, right? And they all have their own little personality as they interact together. They have like a kind of birth order. And I find that to be, it makes something that can be a little bit, can get boring, it makes it kind of more fun. It makes your drawing better too. So that could be helpful. I suspect it will be very helpful. 
and there's a lot of folds of skin and stuff and you'll get good at drawing folds and overlaps this is great training for just everything patience observation how things connect drawing in 3d foreshortening anatomy and all that fun stuff all right so let's keep going let's do another one using that that technique So we have a thumb and we've got a mitten, like a mitt, like an oven mitt. And see that gesture, that C curve, all the knuckles line up there along that so you can build from that. like little mountains these knuckles so I get the big stuff in and then I can start with the smaller stuff okay so let's see and the tips of these fingers kind of line up along this gesture so let's see And then the knuckles are often very fleshy. Get that little pinky in there. And then the things that are coming forward, you just make them a little bit darker. So they appear to be closer to us. So there we go. Right, pretty complex. They're like they're like mountain ranges, right? They're almost they can be like landscapes a little bit. All right, let's move on to the next one. Like that. Hmm. Okay. So we've got. So you can kind of draw from thing to thing too, right? You could not plan it out as much, not block it in. And just go from thing to thing and see if you can 
make it all work. You'll get used to it. You'll get better. You just gotta draw a bunch of hands. It's just like anything else. You draw a bunch, you get better, and you learn new things, and you make new observations. And those new observations, when you add them up, they start to like multiply in their effect. And things get more and more realistic as you observe more. My hand is like like that. Yes. Okay. And you need to really concentrate, right? It's just, it takes a lot of concentration. And let's try this. This one's really coming at me. <laughs> I bet this looks funny in the camera. Look at this. Look at how the, the fingers. The tips line up along gesture lines. The knuckles line up. It's pretty neat. You can just, again, think of them as these little tubes. Break it down into little simple, easier to manage concepts or ideas or shapes or forms. That's the key to any drawing, drawing anything. Thumb. 
Oh, that's a tough position. And then the tips of the fingers from this position, they almost have this <clears throat> little wedge-like shape, this little ridge where the fleshy part is like a little, there's an edge to it. It's weird. It's not just totally round. Okay. Let's see here. Let's just try Try this. Yes, if you draw comic books, you gotta have hands. If you draw portraits, you're gonna run into hands. Looking at skeletons and hand, the bones of the hand and fingers is helpful at some point. But it's not necessary to get started. All right, so how many do we have there? Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. Ten. And then let's arrange them a little bit, compose them, you know, space them out a little bit, try to make it look pleasing on the page. All right, so that is gonna, that's our challenge. It's 100 hands. 10 hands for 10 days and but feel free to go at your own pace you could do more you could do less um, the key is just to draw right enjoy it learn and um,
So you can use the hashtag DJ for draw juice, DJ 100 hands, and then post them in the Facebook group. It's going to be awesome. Not going to be easy, but it's going to be awesome. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was helpful. I really hope to see you in the challenge. Um, I know you can rise up to it. I know you can face this challenge and conquer it, right? And don't worry about the results. Just worry about put the pencil mileage in and you're going to be good. All right, so we'll start this tomorrow. And... Um, yeah, so today is Wednesday. We'll start Thursday. Okay, so 10 days from then, the challenge will be done. Okay, all right. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.